Let me tell you how it is. How it is. Let me tell you how it is. How it is. Let me tell you how it is. They walk in and they bring me an American flag cake. An American flag cake. Now this is something you can't quite go down to the corner store and buy, you know, your corner bakery there in Islamabad. The fact that they made this, the fact that they took this, this date, July 4th, a date that means nothing to them, but means a whole hell of a lot to me, and did something about it for me as an American, meant so, so much. So when people think you're crazy for going to crazy places and doing crazy things, you're doing exactly what you should be doing. And in so doing, get to shatter stereotypes that you would not otherwise be able to do. So uh, that's my story. I said, I said, okay, because what happens is they give you, they, you get to teach primitive skills, and one of them is creating fire with something called a bow drill set. And um, that teamed with the fact that my sister and I have been best friends since she was born um, when I was three years old, and I saw her and pointed at her and said, mine. And then <laughs> also when um, I was at the time pursuing a not so lucrative career as a ski bum, so it all made sense that I should fly across the country to become a wilderness therapy instructor in Asheville, North Carolina, and um, take some kids out into the woods. So uh, that's what we did. We walked and talked with him and made sure there are lots of people around. It was a little sketchy at this point. And he points to an alley, and this is where the story gets oh. scary and sad or sketchy or law and order. And <laughs> so he goes and he's like, he's like What's down there? And I was like, it's a public alley. People drive on that. It's Boston, whatever. Times. Especially when he was in the psychiatric ward in the hospital and he'd call me 20 times in a day and say, Rachel, you've got to get me a sub, a steak and cheese sub with onions and peppers, and then I want a donut and coffee right now. And could you get me one tomorrow too? Or sometimes he'd call me from his group home many times and say, Rachel, get me out of here. You've got to get me out of here. The cook's trying to poison me. I know the house manager's trying to kill me. Get me out of here now. And then there were the times when he thought he was the governor of Massachusetts, and he'd get really mad that people weren't doing what he told them as the governor. I learned that when you try to help someone, when you try to go to someone and, and, and um, bring them from something that's destroying them, that they, they don't understand how to fix this problem in their life, you have to go there. You can't say, come here where everything's fine, where everything's nice, drop the gun, because it's, it's better here. You have to go there, you have to look in their world, you have to see, well, why are you holding this right now? Like, can you explain to me where you are? And she described why she wouldn't hang herself, you know, that, was, that would have been grotesque for the, her family, she explained why she wouldn't, um, you know, these other ways of killing herself, and why she and then and then in fourth grade at springtime I have a dream and I don't know exactly what happened in the dream but I woke up uh, changed uh, transformed and I headed to school that day with this sense of the opening of it you know a muse uh, just the inspiration and this sense that Mary was the person I needed to see that she was going to be there that she was going to be my girlfriend and. I walked to school, I put on my best shirt, I didn't think it had six stripe lines or six stripe vertical colors. And I slicked back my hair and I was singing and the birds were out. It's in Maryland, DC area. When you go to the grocery store, it's just gonna happen. So I've been studying Chinese for three semesters. So I got A's. It's really, I do that, I get A's. So but like, I got A's in classroom Chinese. It is not like living in the middle of China, what I like to call the beginning and the end of civilization. So I get there, it's, my, it's the end of my first week, and I finally get out to the house, like I get out of the hotel, and while I was in a group scholarship, there were 16 of us, I was really relying on the people who were either American-born Chinese or had studied in China before and like had some level of fluency to help me order things like noodles, dumplings, chicken, you know, all the stuff we covered in the textbook. So, it's the end of the first week, and I'm like, yeah, it's like, I can go and order dumplings. Sweet. So we're having a party for our program directors that are going away. And I'm like, all right, if I can get noodles for lunch, I can go to the grocery store, which is Chen Mian, directly in front 
of our hotel, I can walk in there and I can buy a knife to cut a cake. Because we have like all this stuff going on and we got somebody to get plates and cake and I'm like, I can't get a cake. That was not a chapter in the textbook. Um, and it's like, it's, we had movie tickets and getting a cab. I can't buy a cake. So but somebody, you, you've been in Beijing for the past six months, can you get a cake? Another school, like um, public school, and all I know is the word boner, and I know it's like, what the one? And so, <laughs> and I'm like, what's an erection? And so, one of the older high schooler kids was like, well, um, it's when, it's when the blood, uh, kind of, you know, the flows through the penis, and it's, it's, it does the, and then I was like, I don't understand you, could you, and then one of the kids shouted out, Emily, it's a boner! <laughs> <laughs> one day, and one of us, my friend Brian, just stopped cold and just started pointing and staring. And we're like, what? What are you talking about? He's like, pointing and staring, and then someone else, I don't know who it was, yelled, it's a hand. <laughs> and we all screamed, and because we were 12, the screams were like pretty high pitched. <laughs> and we all took off running, and I think I stepped on somebody. House, and I'm like, whoa, he's got a transformer. I went to my knees, this is great. And I go home and I tell my brother Robert, yeah, we got, I have this new friend, you should check out his toys. So I take my brother Robert over to Billy's house, we play with it's because they would receive as a family the welfare basket. So in the 1980s, when Ronald Reagan was waging war against the so-called welfare queen, he was waging war against my grandmother. And my father would tell me that growing up, he had to eat really fast, something that I've inherited, because when you have 13 siblings, the only way that you can get seconds is if you're done before your siblings have begun to eat. <laughs> he told me stories growing up of how his bedroom was the kitchen, because that's where you could roll the bed, because the kitchen was a warmer place to sleep at night than the bathroom, and those were the options. Presented to him. It's pretty good compared to eight dollars an hour, and it was my first actual professional job in a finance department. I worked on the fourth floor, and on the first floor was a cafeteria. It was a really big cafeteria. Um, it had three refrigerators and four microwaves, and it had like a mini little, like a mini store for your hot cocoa. And come downstairs, and we could have it together, and you could have it free. So I said, hey, that's a pretty good idea, you know? So every morning, we'd go together, we'd get my hot cocoa, she'd get her favorite, like, cinnamon thing or whatever. And then um, we'd go and we'd make co coffee and hot cocoa. So one, mo one morning I come in and um, uh, my coworker is there. So I just uh, kind of stand there and then he says, hi, Khadija. And I'm just like, uh, hi, um, hi, Greg and reeds, and the water was just filled with life, and old condoms, and Coke cans, and dead hands, or newspapers, right? Um, and I just, the kids and I had watched uh, these 16 little bullfrog tadpoles hatch, and I was going to wade into that water and take one for the team, because like India's ambassador's child was waiting on the shore, and I was going to have him like come into the water, because I mean, it was vibrant, filled with life. So, I'm walking in, and the kids are like, go, Dad, go, go, Dad, go, and I'm like, yeah! So I got my net, and I'm pulling the tadpoles out one by one, and they're counting 10, 16, 20, woo, 20 tadpoles, and I'm like, yeah! And then I walk out, and I go, mm, Dad, what's wrong with your legs? And I look down. Yeah, some nature girl I am. I walked into a stagnant pond highway runoff. What did I think was going to happen? But 40 leeches on my legs. Oh, that's idiocy. And I'm like, oh, cool, yeah, that's what it says on your shirt. And he's like, it, 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 it is? And I'm like, yeah, d didn't you know that? And he's like, no, I'm blind! <laughs> and then we high fived, and it was the greatest day ever. <laughs> So here I am, I'm picking up underwear off the floor, I'm wiping down firemen who show up. And I mean, I think it's like mandatory that all firefighters are just like wicked hot. Like, they all show up. Sign it. From now on, 
You will tell your children to tell their children to tell their children to tell their children that when time travel is invented, they will send someone back to Berwick, Maine on October 3rd, 2010 to come to the back door and knock four times at midnight. And we all look at the clock. It's like 11.55, <laughs> almost midnight. And we're like, all right, Stevie, we'll do this. So looking at each other, we sign. And uh, he, we, and we wait. And he goes, all right, just hold on. I go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Runs away. And Stevie comes back. And they're like, oh, Jen just went to go see Mom. It's fine. OK, I run around the house. It's dark. And I, I feel excited and nervous. I'm creeping along. And I go in the back, go to the back door, and I can hear silence. It's the kitchen, silence in the kitchen. Then I house, can you take care of the dog? And I was like, yeah, I can do it, I can do it, it's fine. And meanwhile, I'm in my first year of law school at this point, and all that's going through my head is like, if I do that, it's negligence, and he's gonna sue me. And like, <laughs> and if somebody like breaks their leg, it's gonna be a crime, and I'm gonna go to jail, damn. Um, but so I'm like, okay, I can do it, I can do it. And he is not gone for 20 minutes when I go to get the dog out of the kennel, and she slips out of her leash and runs off down the road. And I'm like, oh no, the dog from hell is running away from me right now. And um, I'm freaking out. I call him. I'm walking, and I hear from behind me a terrifying sound. Look out! Look over my shoulder, the girl from down the street windmilling her arms as if she's about to take flight. I turn, I attempt to run, I fail into the back of me. Now I'm falling forward. My hands become stuck in the pockets of my coat. Oh. Face first into the ice.